Um, so I'd like to talk about the uh, impossible and the poetic together in one fell swoop. Um, recently, I've been thinking a lot about um, John Caputo. I did an interview with him a little while ago for Homebrewed Christian Thai, and that will be coming out shortly. Uh, he is a blast, a generous, warm man to be sure, and also a fairly brilliant mind. And between him and Catherine Keller, uh, I feel like I routinely get uh, flipped around and um, inspired. And uh, I was interviewing him, and we talked for a while about his um, coming book, which will be out not too long from now, uh, about a theology of the event. And it has to do with the flesh and the, the, the reality of mortality. The fact that we're, as humans, going to die, and that that is... Um, important that it that that uh, end of our uh, fleshly life shades the life that we in fact live while not yet dead and um, we therefore talked about the book that came before that which is called the weakness of God a theology of the event and I will just say right now that uh, he hopes more people read against ethics uh, apparently everyone is really into this book the weakness of God uh, including me, and he hopes that more people read uh, Against Ethics. So there's my plug for Professor Caputo. Um, however, um, I am going to stay here in The Weakness of God and talk about um, page 102 and this kind of interlude and a running theme throughout his work, which is to do with the poetics of the impossible. And I'll read just a couple um, sentences there on the bottom of 102. In the kingdom, things happen by the impossible. To be very precise, everything is possible just in virtue of being impossible. In response to Mary's objection that she could not possibly be with child, Gabriel points out with angelic courtesy that with God nothing is impossible. And so begins the kingdom. And still another short circuit, another cross wiring, for with the idea of something happening by the impossible, every reader knows that I am running still another structural line between the beginning of Luke's famous story of the Annunciation and Deconstruction. To the way things happen with God's rules, where God is, nothing is impossible. Um, amen. Um, I think it's terribly important that we consider um, the role of the impossible. And um, maybe a subset of the impossible is the improbable and the unlikely and the absolute. Uh, because therein we begin to reach problems as Christians. Um, when we know that there are holy people in the world, that there are people who are um, right with God, and we point to them and say, yes, that's a holy person, or... Um, possibly I'm a holy person, we could be right. We could be right. Perhaps the person we're pointing to is a holy person. What is important, though, is that if we ascribe that person as the absolute model of the holy, then we, in fact, pull back from the possibility that something else might be holy. And that, the limitation there, the full knowledge of what holiness is, is not, it appears to me, how God works in the world. Um, there's a nuance there that we're missing if we ascribe holiness or um, rightness or with God or righteousness as a fixed thing that is done forever once it is done once. Um, take a look at this. <laughs>
was Michael Motion. And um, in a bizarre sense uh, of the way the world works, I had the opportunity to study with him in college. He was a master teacher uh, when I was studying dance, of all things, uh, at the University of Rochester. And he started his lecture like this. You know, he did that uh, kind of contact improvisation thing. Uh, pretty amazing stuff. And he said, before I did this, it was impossible. I talked to jugglers, I talked to dancers, and I told them what I thought I wanted to do, and they said, no, 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 that's impossible. I did the impossible, and once it had been done, it became possible. That's the order of things. Impossible, completed, possible. Now, he's talking about a, a kind of physical thing, a kind of a gymnastic, um, a, a juggling, a manipulation of objects. But I actually think that his uh, framing, his schematic for understanding the world is actually pretty accurate. Something is impossible until God makes it possible. And then once it has been made possible, we accept it as part of the way that the world is. In the kingdom of God, all those things which are yet possible but have not yet occurred, reside. And I think it's really important for us as people of faith to remember that we only have part and parcel of the world which is yet to come. And yet, constantly, there are inbreakings of the Holy Spirit in which the kingdom of God is seen. So it's up to us to both manage and attempt to within all of our power, be holy in this moment and the world we have in these days, and also seek out that which God will provide for us in the days to come. Um, the so what of this is for those of you that are preachers and um, teachers and leaders within traditions, it's really important for me um, and I think potentially I would like to offer the, the extension that maybe for you you consider the fact that that which is, is not all that is. You know, we have congregations and denominations and um, organizations, and if all we try to do is maintain the status quo and what it means to be a good person within the systems that are already in place, then we deny the possibility that God will act in the world um, and create the possibility of something new. Um, we often are real big fans of, of God being really powerful and in charge and slamming through stuff. And that tends to establish systems of hierarchies where people are in power and we just subjugate ourselves to that power for the sake of kind of uh, laying claim to it. They say, ha, we're doing the right thing because, because that person said so. Um, I think maybe what's worth considering is that God somehow and sometimes works in the margins that were pulled forth into the world in ways that we had never even considered. That what we have previously thought to be impossible is in fact done. And once done, um, becomes something we can all live into. Just a thought.